And a very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My name is Jeff Owens, General Manager of WEIU. My co-host is Michelle Bravo. Hello. EIU student. When do you graduate, Michelle? Uh, everything goes well this spring. This spring. Yeah. All right. Our guest making a return appearance, Lacey Spence from WEIU Television. Welcome, Lacey. Good afternoon. Well, um, we're going to talk a lot about the TV shows that you are produced for us here at WEIU Television. But first of all, one of those shows is having a big event tomorrow night. So give us a little bit of what we can expect tomorrow night on WEIU TV. Yeah, so we're very excited to uh, be back doing a live Being Well. And this time we won't have to be overly social distance, 6,000 feet away from each other. <laughs> uh, and so we are doing Being Well, the pandemic panel live. And so the premise behind it is we are are hopefully on kind of the tail end of all things pandemic, COVID pandemic. And so we would like to uh, field questions to a panel of local medical professionals about uh, COVID related questions, past, present, and future. And um, really just give our viewers an opportunity that if they have questions, they can do this open range. It's not just me coming up with questions or folks here at the station. So we'll have a phone number to call. And if you happen to have a pen ready, it's 877-727-9348. The end part spells W-E-I-U. It's also on our W-E-I-U Facebook, but we would just encourage people to call in tomorrow night from 7 to 8 p.m. We will have phone operators standing by to take down your questions. They'll pass them on to me and then I'll pass them on to the panel. Awesome. Now, uh, what doctors can are, can we expect to see tomorrow night? So we've got Ryan Jennings, who is the chief medical officer for HSHS St. Anthony's Memorial Hospital in Effingham. We've got uh, Dr. Jeremy Topin. He's a pulmonologist for Sarah Bush Lincoln. And Robert Healy, he is a doctor. He's the associate chief medical officer of quality for Carl. And then we've got Dr. William Elliott, and he is behavioral health from Horizon Health. So we've got a lot of our local hospitals represented a lot of different um, fields and specialties represented so hopefully a pretty well-rounded panel for any of the questions that might be posed when you when you think about getting these four doctors together and you, and you want the call-in questions I mean when you, when you think of calling questions, what do you think maybe our viewers are going to be, what's on their mind right now when you think about knock on wood, we're at the end of COVID, but it's not over. So what are you thinking? I think overall, there's just been such a learning curve um, since COVID was such a new virus and how it affects people. I mean, some people, they're asymptomatic. Some people, it feels like a cold and some people, it really knocks them on their feet and lands them in the hospital. So questions about why that might be. Um, we got to watch the development of a vaccine in real time and why was this able to happen so quick why is it effective for some people and why is it not effective for others why are there so many boosters and the different strains and there's just a lot to digest and so I think um, the opportunity for people to have questions is very much out there um, so how does this affect like the production process? Like what is the difference between when you guys were in COVID and did it and now that likes changing? So our last live show that we had during the pandemic, we focused on um, COVID and then also mental health. So it was very much driven by that mental health aspect. And then while we were doing production, it was how do we get um, panelists all in the same room while practicing social distancing, making sure that our set is clean, microphones are clean, the table's clean, and it's not that we're neglecting that tomorrow, but as people have been able to be vaccinated and we've had updates to the six foot rule, um, we can, you know, get back together again and have just a, a more normal setting, I would guess. Um, I know that we had had backup plans on backup plans ready in <laughs> case another variant came out. We were we finally have um, the capability to uh, bring in people via like a video conferencing. So whether that's a Zoom or a Skype, and we can actually send that now out over the airwaves, which at the start of the pandemic, we didn't have ready. So um, definitely a lot of prep work behind the scenes to make sure that the show will go on. Since you're counting on viewers to call in, but I mean, you still are are going to over prepare and have a list of a lot of questions. How many questions? I mean, like I do my show, and I have usually twenty questions ready. I mean, how many do you have on a on a uh, show like tomorrow night? I'm pretty sure I've got ten to twelve right now. Um, I'm definitely an over preparer, but we've got an hour to fill. We've got a little break in the middle, so about two 25-minute blocks, 
and um, I've fielded some questions from folks here at WEIU, kind of crowdsourced from family and friends, because I think that's a pretty good heartbeat or pulse on what the general public might want to know about. But of course, those questions are just there as we're waiting on phone questions to come in, which again, I encourage people to call in because we would much rather make sure that your questions, the people at home gets answered. Well, yeah, you think about it, you have four doctors from four of the, you know, the better area hospitals in, you know, in our viewing area. Mm -hmm. And you think about it, you can ask them a question and, and there's no charge. I mean, you know, it, it's a free, it's kind of a, a free little medical advice tomorrow night if you look at it that way. It is, but we've got that disclaimer that this doesn't take the place of, yeah. you know, your regular doctor yeah. visit. But yes, I mean, but, but feel stuff free. they want to find out. Yeah. Oh, yes. Call in, pick their brains. Like I said, we've got a pulmonologist, we've got behavioral health to get the mental health side of things, um, an associate chief medical officer of quality, another chief medical officer. And these are folks who are dedicated to making sure that the process of patient care um, goes smoothly. They want to hear feedback and know things. Now, if you're asking some crazy off the wall <laughs> questions, we've got to let you know. No, <laughs> our phone operators are screening those, so we're not just, it's not just a free-for-all or just to yeah. um, put out opinions per se, but we do want to answer your genuine questions. There you go. Okay, so let's say that I call in. How does it work? I'm greeted by and you know someone working the line, and they'll transfer the question to them. Or? So we've got um, phone operators standing by. One of them is uh, our fabulous Joe Ostrowski, who is here at WEIU, and he would answer the phone. He would get your name. He would get what town you're from, just so we can give you the shout out. Mm -hmm. um, he would take down your question on pen and paper, and then the questions will actually be digitally sent to me okay. so he will then send them so it's not like you're live on air okay. and have to like pick a doctor to address and try and remember what was their name what was their specialty um we will handle all of that that's nice. A little screener action yeah. there when you think about it. Um, obviously, tomorrow night also kicks off the the fall premiere of all your of all the Bean Wells. So, can you take us through the what we can expect? Not just live. We know tomorrow night's going to be, but through the season, what we can expect Bean Well this this fall. Yeah. So we've got 13 new episodes, and I will say that um, COVID does get a mention in some of the episodes, but it's nice to not be so COVID centric for a season because season 14 and 13 were very heavy on those. Um, so we're getting back to a lot of general health. So we've got um, healthy lifestyle habits with um, advanced nurse practitioner Andrew McDevitt. We've got addiction recovery, smoking cessation, um, some interesting ones, emergency medical services um, director Samantha McCarty. She came in to talk about their remote health monitoring, which was something that kind of spurred out of the pandemic, but basically they can monitor your health stats from home and help identify health issues ahead of time, which can be a life a game changer. Um, we've got, let's see, we've talked about pediatric milestones. Um, that's a fun one for me because I don't have kids, so I'm trying to ask questions that would be helpful for a parent. But Dr. Molly Jana, she really walked me through that in a, in a very helpful way. Um, what else? I really liked that we talked about rural health and farm safety with Amy Rademacher from Carl as well. Um, just because I know that agriculture is such a huge thing in this area, so to be able to talk about stressors that farmers face, um, especially I believe their suicide, suicide rate is one of the highest. Oh, wow. And so talking about ways to help them manage stress, to manage their sleep cycles, to um, support one another, uh, I think is really important and probably something you're not going to find anywhere else around here. That's neat. Neat as heck. Like a, lot, a lot of good topics there. Yeah. Now, how do you, do you decide the topics or do you work with doctors or send out an email or take us through that process as well? It's a collaborative effort. So um, the over-preparer in me, I suggest some topics, but I, of course, want the feedback of um, physicians and those who are actually in the medical field because they'll know better than I what would be most helpful for a patient. But I try to come up with um, new topics or topics that maybe we haven't covered before on being well, mostly because you can only have so many episodes on heart health. We can only tell you to diet and exercise and drink more water so much. <laughs> so, um, like, I don't think we had done pediatric milestones before. And so it was really exciting to collaborate on, you know, those kind of topics. And they'll suggest stuff to me, and sometimes we'll have to reroute it a little bit. But, like, a few seasons ago, we got to do um, something. It was with Carl, and it was the uh, mind-heart connection. And they had got some really cool new equipment. And they were able to give us, like, the heart side and then also the brain side. And we got to mash them together in one episode. <laughs> and I wouldn't have thought of that, but they had the new 
new tech, and they suggested it, so we went for it. Cool. Is it tough getting doctors to open up? I mean, uh, when, you, when, you, when they're on air or when you're in it, when you're doing your interview or doing your show? Or are there tricks that you use? As a, to <laughs> there are no tricks, um, but I try to make it a conversation. And I know that a lot of times there are physicians that they'll come in and they might be a little bit nervous, but I try to tell them to just picture me as a patient. So if your patient's asking these questions, just ignore the camera and we'll go about it from there. But I've been so blessed with all of these physicians and medical professionals that I've gotten connected with. Um, they've all been very personable and very knowledgeable. And the 24 minutes that I'm interviewing viewing them usually just flies by. Good, good, good. Um, I just wanted to say that I thought it was crazy that, you know, I didn't realize that farmers had such a high suicide rate, but um, I wanted to ask more about the one where you were saying where it was like getting taken care of at home and like tracking possible health issues from home. I thought that was interesting just because we are moving more forward with like technology and like, you know, even during COVID, there was like online consultations, which have never really been a thing. Yeah, so um, they definitely expanded telehealth and the capabilities with that. And so for that episode, I believe an example that um, Samantha McCarty had given was there was someone who during the pandemic, they were struggling with uh, managing their diabetes. And so they were able to like see remotely, the doctors were, um, the level of blood sugar mm -hmm. and it was one of those the patient I think she was still kind of learning how to test her blood sugar and get that you know get her bearings on how to manage her diabetes and the nurses were able to like call the doctor and say hey you know this is happening you need to you know take more sugar or or less um, but she was telling me that the responsibility had actually kind of fallen on a child because they were struggling oh, wow. so bad with managing their diabetes so by implementing this uh, program and this technology she was able to manage her diabetes better than ever before anything that you learned from, from a, just a standpoint of just a, a human being when you when you over the over the uh, mostly this coming up at these 13 episodes is there something that just stands out i know you talked on the farmer like you know michelle said yeah. and a little bit about the telehealth but anything else that just stands out that you're like wow factors that people want to hear about i learn something new every episode and i think that's um that's something fun that a viewer can take away is that i'm probably going to learn something new no matter what the topic is um i would say when i was talking with casey joe rogers from horizon health she was talking about food and inflammation and that the foods that we eat can cause pain in our joints and um she was talking about if we are to remove a certain category of food, like one at a time, we can kind of pinpoint what's causing that. Now it's best to do it with a physician, but it's like, if you think it might be dairy, you can take your dairy out for a week and you like journal along with it. And I had no idea that food could have that kind of impact. Normally I just think, oh, this food makes me sleepy or this one gives me heartburn, but just actually inflammation in the joints, that's a big deal and can cause a lot of pain for someone. Yeah, that's a good one. There you go. Do you, um, I, I know you're, you're a, a professional, but do you get a little bit nervous, scared when, when live TV, when the lights come on, the cameras go on and they say seven o'clock tomorrow night? Just a little bit. Um, I used to do news yeah. five days a week. And so I would be on for anything from traffic crashes to shootings and fires. And that was uh, definitely, it keeps you up to date on how to be on live TV. <laughs> and so being out of that, removed from that for a little bit, it's a little intimidating. And I've never conducted a panel before, but um, I mean, at least in this capacity getting viewer questions but i'm excited for it and we're just going to feel the fear and do it anyways how many seasons uh, will this be of being well this is season 15. can you give us a recap of, of of the start to now or just you know how this became came about do you know i would love to say that i know but i've only been here for seasons 13 through 15. um prior to myself Lori. Thanks. Laura Casey at the time hosted it, and um, she had passed on the baton and done a very great job laying the foundation. And then Ken Armstrong, who also works here, was also at the helm. And so I'm happy to be host number three. And uh, I mean, I, I love being able to find topics that matter to people, things that are new and different and cutting edge. And that's what drives me to keep doing it. 
Now, we'll get back to being well a little bit and, and recap in case you, you just missed it about the information for tomorrow night. But the other show that you do here is a show that you brought the idea to me uh, a couple of years ago, it seems like now. It's called Take a Hike. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Take a Hike, great name, right? Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> But you finished season one, and now you're prepping for season two. Tell us what we can expect next year on WEIU's Take a Hike. Yes, yeah, so I love Take a Hike. And just to give the disclaimer, a lot of people think it's just a hiking show, and that might turn them off because they're like, hiking is not my vibe. Um, but it's more vibe. than the vibe. <laughs> it is more than hiking, for sure. It's an outdoor show. You can, uh, we talk about fishing, geocaching, hunting, blah, bird watching, outdoorsy stuff, you name it. It's more just about take a hike to whatever episode location we're focusing on. So we've just, I believe, locked in our six episodes coming up next spring. So we've got <clears throat> Excuse me, Walnut Point State Park, which is up by Oakland, my old stomping grounds. We've got the U of I Arboretum. We've got Warbler Ridge, which is near Charleston, Lake Sarah in Effingham, Milk Creek, which is over in Clark County, and then our uh, real haul, our real take a hike, um, we are looking at going to the Shawnee National Forest. So we were staying a little bit closer. for snakes down there, you know that, right? (laughs) Those are called nope ropes where I'm from. (laughs) Uh, But we're going to make a little bit of a haul to get down to the Shawnee National Forest. I know it's um, farther than central Illinois, but to still show what Illinois has got, and I think it's going to just be a completely different look than what we have here in central Illinois. No, that's cool, yeah. So... Yeah, um, how did you guys come up with the idea for the show in the first place? So this was also kind of born out of the pandemic when uh, you really couldn't go anywhere. You know, the the mall was closed or the movie theater or anything fun. Um, you could at least go outside. And so once they reopened the like state parks and things of that nature, we were like, okay, well, let's share and find out where these people can go and where they can have the most fun and pack up the family and go check out. Now, do you, you shoot the, the season two now, and it airs in the spring, or is that correct, over the next yeah. few months? Yeah, so we try to shoot it late summer of the year before while things are still green, just so that when it airs in the spring and you're making your spring and summer travel plans, everything is still green. Um, but we love getting some of the photos of, like, fall and winter at these locations, and we sometimes share those in the episode in case that's when you decide to travel there. Now, when... when you, You've done. You've got that first season under your belt. So now you're heading. You think your thought process is is uh, season two. And I know every producer, every person, always wants to up the next year. So have you thought about how you're gonna, you know, improve it? And, you know, up your game, as they say, for season two. That's why we're going to Southern Illinois. That's um, only one show, though. I would say. Um, <laughs> It's really, I just want to keep the bar at least at the same level. And in talking to some of the uh, people I'll be interviewing for these episodes, they are just so proud of their locations. And when I ask them, you know, what do you want to feature? We have a demo portion within the episode, which is them showcasing what they're most proud of. And for instance, I had a Zoom call last week with uh, the folks from Lake Sarah, and they really couldn't narrow it down. There was a list of over 30 points of what they were so excited to share about Lake Sarah. And we love that. We love that enthusiasm. So um, this will be a great season, too. And I'm confident in that. But as far as upping the bar, we'll just have to wait till we shoot the episode. Well, that is what they call a TV teaser there. She <laughs> Michelle? Uh, what's been your favorite location so far? Uh, for season one, I really enjoyed going to Allerton Park. Uh, it is over near Monticello, and just the variety of plants and things to see and do there. I've already been back two or three times with my husband because I loved it and had so much fun. And so, um, but they were all winners. So I tell you what, if you're looking at that list and trying to decide somewhere to uh, spend a weekend or pop by, there you can't go wrong with any of them. Good answer. Um, obviously, Being Well and Take Ike are your shows, but a couple other shows also debut this fall. Uh, the Power Report with Kelly and then uh, Ramin Carbasio and City Spotlight. Just give us a recap of maybe what pe- people can expect from those two shows. Sure thing. So uh, for Kelly, we've been recording the Paul Report over the summer. We've had some fabulous uh, WEIU student interns along the way. And we had, uh, let's see, we had Rachel the Comfort Dog. She came in studio, and I also got to check out her fifth birthday party, which 
Which I tell you, it's a rough day at the office when you get to spend it with the Golden Retriever at their birthday party. Uh, we also got to see some uh, ginormous donkeys. They're very rare. There's like less than a thousand in the world, I think, and they're trying to help grow the population. And it was really funny to watch the sweet doctor that we were interviewing. She was she had them both leashed, and they're just dragging her. They're taking her on a drag. She's not walking them. Um, so those are two episodes to definitely look out for, and I believe there's going to be some Paw Classics, um, so some oldies but goldies. And then um, Ramin loves what he does with City Spotlight. He's already um, been to Charleston for this new season of City Spotlight and talking about the new renovations at their school, which is exciting. And he always has, you know, a, a pulse or a heartbeat on what's happening in this area. So I uh, love that for him and his show. And it's fall now. And the festivals are back and popping off. And so... Um, he should be having some recaps of those, but you'll have to check out our uh, WEIU website for the latest. There you go. Michelle, any other thoughts on, thoughts for Lacey? No. Um, Lacey, you, have, you do your two shows, Being yeah. Well and Take a Hike, and you also help when we do This Is Our Story, which is either once or twice a year, depending, and this year it's probably going to be once, but next year it'll probably be twice again. Is there When you when you throw those dreams out there, is, and I'm not, as your boss, I'm throwing this out, it's going, oh my gosh. No pressure. I, but no, no, it's more on me. Is there any other thing that you say, man, I, I haven't tackled this? this yet in TV and I'd like to do a show or an episode or a doc or something on something else. Is there anything else swirling around in that mind? I think my mind's pretty full with what I've got on my plate, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, I love talking to people. The Our Story series is really um, close to my heart, especially since one of the first ones I got to do was Ashmore, Oakland, Kansas. This is our story. And just getting to tell people stories as a former person in news, I love that storytelling aspect and letting people, you know, have the mic and tell it tell the story their way. Um, so if there's a way to circle back or revitalize or revamp and up our story i just i love that experience do you miss news ever there are times that i miss news um the the dark portions the the sad headlines i don't i love getting to meet unique people and tell their crazy fun stories i love anchoring a newscast and um i i think it's a very admirable profession because you are the first line of news and information to people when they might need it most i mean especially uh weather forecasters when there's mm -hmm. severe weather and um, i have a lot of respect for it but it takes a very special person with a very strong Strong, um, mental health game and things of that nature to stay in it. I think one of the other neat things that we do here at WEIU is all of our live events, including even Issues and Attitudes, which is also on TV if you're just listening on radio, is we always have student involvement. Yes, and I'm a product of this program. Ramin Cabracion's a product of this program, and I just, I hope our students that we get to work with uh, leave with you know, a sense that we taught them something, that they learned something, and that they had some fun while doing it. Yeah, how many? We have like three or four here right now. All learning, <laughs> I right? said something earlier, and, <laughs> They're all and Kate they started are, yeah. to do a little bit of a dance. There you go. <laughs> or Bailey. I'm, <laughs> I'm failed. Just send me home now. <laughs> that's all right. It's, it's early still. Um, again, let's go back to being well again, because that's the kind of the kickoff, I say, to the fall season in, in, in a way here. Uh, and the live show tomorrow night. Just recap what people can do, the phone number, when, where, and all, and how. Yes, so you'll want to find us on uh, WEIU TV. We will also be streaming live to our YouTube page, our Facebook page, and we want your questions live. So we will be live from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. and we will have phone operators standing by to take your questions down. You do not have to be live on air trying to share what your question is. We will write them down, just get your name, what town you're from, and then we will get those passed on to me and then I will post the question to the panel in real time. We'll be uh, screening those calls to make sure that they are good questions and they don't catch our docs too off guard. Uh, <laughs> but we've got uh, some, we've got a chief medical officer, a chief medical officer of quality of behavioral health and also a pulmonologist. So a wide variety of uh, medical professionals and specialties. And then the number you can call, grab your, your pen or put it in your phone, 877 877- 727-9348 and that's on our Facebook page. We've got a post about it pinned to the top right now so if you didn't get a chance to write it down, uh, go ahead and find it there. We have a few minutes left with Lacey Spence of WEIU-TV. Michelle Bravo our co-host is here as well. Any other stuff about TV production and the shows that you do that you want the folks out there in radio and TV land to learn today from Issues and Attitudes? Um, people think that we get the summers off since we are located <laughs> uh, on EIU 
IU's campus, but that could not be farther from the truth. We uh, hit the ground running. We have got usually two to three productions uh, going on at the same time during the summer. It goes on into the fall, and we could not do what we do without the help from our fabulous students. Um, there's just not enough manpowers as the the saying would go and um we just we love what we do and don't take it for granted <laughs> well and the other thing i think people don't what we do is we also do other productions as needed and when the community um you know calls and needs something you know we had a couple of those recently plus remains getting ready to do the um the scholastic bowl with the coles county clash so there's mm -hmm. a lot of other things that uh that we do and that we can do and just give us a holler and, and we always see i right, tell so everybody we'll see if we can fit it in and we go from right. there right so. and news watch news watch, news watch is yeah. top tier 5 30 every night Monday through Friday. And live news starts this week as we talk about yes, this week being full, so important. The full the, 30 minutes. The full 30 minutes starts tonight if you're watching on the Monday or all this week it'll be live. So, all right. Uh, we're going to go through the World Famous State questions. Michelle, you want to answer again today? Sure. All right. <laughs> so we'll go Lacey, then Michelle. And the last question is a three-pronged question, so you need to be ready. And there's no no I don't knows today, okay? <laughs> so, but we'll start off with an easy one. Your all-time favorite movie, Lacey. Uh, the Day After Tomorrow. Okay. Um, I don't know. This is the first one that popped into my head, so I'm just going to say The Sandlot, but probably not. Sandlot? All right. Yeah. Um, songs that remind you of the high school days. Is there a certain song that just takes you back to high school? Anything by Kesha. Probably TikTok. We were obsessed with Kesha. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to sound bad, but like, um, I don't know. I'd say Waka Flocka, if you know who that is. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Black and yellow, right? Yeah. No, that's Wiz Khalifa. Dang. <laughs> There you go. Favorite high school teacher and why? Uh, Patty Hawkins. I do not like math, and she made the classes bearable. Do you have a favorite teacher? Um, high school teacher? Yeah. I'd say probably Miss Sasebes or something. She taught Spanish. She also was, like, the one that was like, you should study abroad. I never did those. So, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't take your advice. Favorite uh, social media. What, what one do you have to use every day? What's your favorite one? I'm on TikTok. Yeah, I did TikTok, too. Okay. I was making a TikTok today, actually. You were? What about? Um, the radio. Like, radio. I was like, oh, we on my way to, like, host the show. There you go. No, that's good, because we, we're start, hopefully next week we're going to start, knock on wood, producing some TikTok uh, videos for WEIU TV and radio. So we'll see how that goes. It's a, It'll be a learning process, and we'll, we'll go from there. Um, French fries, curly fries, or fried potatoes? Curly fries. Um... Any, I, I like all of. Like, no, like, we don't discriminate. I love French fries. But yeah, <laughs> I didn't even know that. So you guys all just get all right. Um, or have you decorated your home for fall yet? Not yet. Um, I know one of my roommates bought a bunch of stuff, but we haven't started like putting them up yet. So. I'm going to have to take my wife's credit card away because <laughs> we are now the fall. You know, we look like a, a place where you can buy stuff. Are so. you thankful, grateful, and blessed? Oh yeah, we got them all. Thank <laughs> God for fall, sweet fall, everything. All right, uh, two more. TV comedy. What's your favorite all-time TV comedy? The Good Place. The Good Place. I don't even know what that is. On NBC. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'd say New Girl. New Girl. I don't yeah. really That's know what a good that one. one. I am definitely older than you two. All right. T last question. Would you be on a game show? What would you like to be on and why? Real quickly. Uh, yes. Lingo, because I have a good vocabulary. I'd say, yeah, probably. Um, family Feud would be fun. I think it's funny to see, like, and I just know that, like, whoever I brought with me would just be, like, not good, but we'd still go. There was a Mattoon kid on there a couple years ago no on Family Feud. I'll tell you the story when we get off mic. It was, it was a classic moment in TV history. So there you go. Well, Lacey, thanks. Being well this week. Uh, I mean, tonight or tomorrow night for live. Uh, tune in and uh, the great semester, our great semester of great programming on WEIU TV. All original. Lots of stuff out there. We're different than all the other PBS stations. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Michelle, we'll see you next week. Lacey, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We are WEIU. Everybody have yourself a very good day.